Hi everyone, this is Alan Lepofsky with Constellation Research. I'm here today to give you a quick overview as we're sort of rounding out 2014 and starting off the wonderful 2015 on the state of the collaboration industry, really the tools that people use to help them get work done together. I want to quickly step you through about 10 different trends that I want you to be aware of so that you can start planning to help your employees and your customers be more productive and more engaged. The first revolves around this concept that I call, we need our tools to be more. And what this means is we don't need more tools. We just need the tools we have to be more efficient, more effective, more streamlined, simpler to use, better integrated. We don't want to keep adding to the tool set. It's already complex enough. We have email and blogs and wikis and social networks and file sharing and on and on and on. Really, we want the tools we have to help us effectively get our jobs done. If we're in sales or marketing or engineering or finance or whatever you happen to do, the tools that are part of your core business set are the tools that you want to use to help you collaborate. It's something that I call purposeful collaboration. So instead of adding more tools, let's have our tools do more things. The second area is focusing on what matters. What this is, is the intersection of collaboration tools and analytics. For years, vendors and the industry have been promising productivity gains with all those things that I just mentioned, like email and chat and blogs and wikis and social networks. But really, are we any more productive than we were in the past? For the first time, we're poised for a really significant breakthrough, where our software tools will use data and analytics to figure out the patterns and trends and things that are happening in our, around the information, the content, and the people we work with and help us focus on the tasks that we should be doing and know which things we should be ignoring, know which things are the most impactful to your organization and which would be a waste of time. So I'm really excited to see how the tools are going to provide some intelligence and help guide us through getting our jobs done. Big, big area for 2015. The third is the rise of lightweight collaboration tools. For the last few years, collaboration platforms have really been built around sort of community, blog, wiki, rich text editors, file sharing, a whole bunch of different elements. In 2014, we saw the rise of much lighter weight tools, things that sort of just use a simple uh, chat metaphor integrated with file sharing and voice over IP to allow us to seamlessly kind of move back and forth with our teams. We saw new vendors like Slack and Hall and Glip make really good progress, as well as seeing the existing vendors like Unify and Cisco introduce new tools into their portfolio. So we're going to see this trend continue in 2015 where lightweight tools integrate with the other tools that we need to provide a very different type of collaboration experience than what we've been doing with the first generation of enterprise social networks. Next is the fact that email is still going to be a critical business tool. While I just finished talking about the rise of all sorts of new collaborative tools, it's important to note that in 2014, all three major email vendors, Microsoft, Google, and IBM, made huge strides in updating the way their email clients work, the way they present information, what they integrate with, helping filter people, really helping people manage their inbox. But that's just the start of it. What we're going to see is a shift where email and collaboration tools become far more integrated together. I'm really looking forward to seeing the boundary of the different types of messages we use go away. What's a chat? What's an email? What's a text message? All of those things are essentially just messages. And we're going to see email clients really transform themselves into being more of messaging hubs that allow us to get all types of communication together in one place. Next up is the rise of niche networks. Now what I mean by that is, if we look back over the last few years, we've really been pushing the idea of openness and transparency, where everybody shares everything. Now that has incredible advantages, great benefits to organizations and knowledge sharing and uh, expertise location. The problem is it actually leads to a larger level of information overload than our siloed off business tools and email clients ever did. So we're starting to see a lot of networks specialize, focus, get smaller. I sort of use the term small is the new big, where networks are formed around very specific interests, uh, skills, problems to solve, etc. Different industries will have specific networks as well. So it's very different the tools you would use to do networking in entertainment versus retail or versus pharmaceutical versus aerospace. Those tools with niche networks 
will allow the people to discuss just the topics they want and integrate with very specific sets of tools. Now don't worry, that doesn't mean I want to see information locked away. People will still have access to these, but it won't just be generic open streams where all the information is combined into one activity stream. Fifth is mobile. Now when I say mobile, immediately I'm sure your mind goes to phones and tablets. The biggest change in mobile is thinking of it not as a device, but thinking of it as a way of working. Thinking about how have you changed your organization's tools and business processes to take advantage of things like cameras, GPSs, eye beacons, accelerometers. You know, mobile is really a new way of getting your work done. And it's important to figure out where in the framework of mobile transformation your, organiza your organization fits in. So mobile, not a device, but a way of working. Sixth is the continued rise of task management. Now, in 2014, we saw five or six vendors get significant venture capital funding rounds, sometimes $5 million, sometimes 10, up to $30 million being fueled into these companies that are focusing on task management. Why? Simple. With the amount of information that's coming at us, either from our social tools, our social media, our internal collaboration tools, it's too much for people to handle. It gets all too jumbled up. Task management or project management or social task management helps people organize the things they need to get their jobs done. Some of these tools will remain standalone, others will be purchased, acquired, integrated uh, into some of the larger software stacks that we use. Next up is cloud file storage. In 2014, we saw companies like Google and Microsoft and Box and Dropbox really fight it out over cost and storage. Now those are both important things to organizations, but the real value in cloud-based file storage comes with not how much files you have, but how you use them. And that's where we're starting to see things like security, platform support for developers, um, business use cases around specific industries. All of those areas outside of the fact of what it costs and how much you can store is really going to be what differentiates one vendor from another. There's lots of new players in this space. There's Huddle and Ignite and EMC Simplicity and Amazon Web Services got into this. IBM Files, uh, Salesforce introduced Files and Files Connect. This is really an important part of the collaboration platform because files are not going away. Files are still key to almost everything people do inside their business. So look for continued uh, improvements in all sorts of aspects around file vendors. And finally, we're back to the age-old argument about suites versus best of breed. Now, in the early 90s and 2000s, big dominant software packages from Microsoft and IBM and Oracle and SAP really dominated the business landscape. And then the cloud came along, and we could start to integrate products from vendor A and vendor B and build these best of breed solutions. And what best of breed does really well is fill in the gaps for areas that suites are missing. But with cloud-based delivery and agile development, the suite vendors now are starting to deliver on features faster than they ever could in the past. And we're starting to see a shift back to organizations wanting to buy from suites. It's easier to deal with one vendor for pricing and licensing and product updates and user interfaces and things like that. So I wouldn't say there's an end to this battle yet, but I think we're seeing a, a huge sort of war again brewing between suites versus best of breed. So there you have it, 10 big trends that I want you to be aware of for the state of collaboration as we enter into 2015. I encourage you to contact Constellation Research to talk about any of these topics in far more detail or a variety of other topics that have something to do with the collaboration industry. Once again, this is Alan Lepofsky. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to working with you in the future.